Okay, so this next lesson is Wednesday. Okay, so we are on effects of changes in ecosystems on populations. Ecos on page 157. So ecosystem components are connected. So changes to living or non-living parts can affect populations. The removal of a single species, a reduced food source, or a change in temperature can cause large changes in other parts of the ecosystem. For example, several years of increased average winter temperatures can cause seeds to germinate earlier and change the behavior of migrating animals like geese or ducks or anything like that. A change may displace or kill individuals and populations. A large portion of a population may move because of a disturbance. Like, okay, I know y'all love to hunt ducks and stuff like that, but if our winters continue to be so warm, those ducks may fly somewhere else for the winter or something like that. We really don't want that to happen. Uh, there may not be enough individuals to sustain the, sustain the population, or they may stay where they are. The population in that area over time and the local population could die out. Ooh, that looks yummy. In Bangladesh, a country in South Asia, it is prone to flooding because it is low-lying and has a long coastline. The frequent flooding affects human, animal, and plant populations. Well, guys, your food looks quite delicious, though. All right, doing the math. Uh, identify factors that change populations. Before the arrival of European settlers in the United States, about 46% of the land was forested. Early settlers spoke of the towering white pine trees. White pines were one of the many native species that were heavily harvested for building ship masts, wagons, fences, and furniture. Clearing of old growth forests for agriculture and commercial purposes hit its greatest rate, highest rate, in the mid 1800s and continued in the mid 1920s. That was the Industrial Revolution area era right then. Um, okay, so this is your graph that you're going to look at to answer the following questions on 15 and 16. You're going to pause the video and answer those right now at the end of bottom of 15 and 17. Now we're going to pick up with page 160. Populations that depend on disturbance. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, all right. In the early 1900s, a major goal of the United States Forestry Service was to stop a forest fire, forest fires. One reason for this effort was to prevent the, for, the destruction of timber resources. I'm just gonna have to talk because I can't find it and my phone's about to die. Uh, however, around the 1960s, scientists began to recognize that the fires are important to the health of forest ecosystems. They realized that a forest ecosystem becomes unhealthy if fires do not occur periodically. It's like a purge and not the movie purge, but it's healthy for a fire to happen every once in a while because you have old dead limbs, you have old trees, you have all this dead stuff in a forest that needs to be burned off every once in a while. And that burn, that total burn adds nutrients to the ground. It adds nitrogen and stuff to the ground. And you have too many trees sometimes and all those trees create overcrowding. So it's this time of new growth. Um, so you've got an overcrowding. So fires clear the forest floor and provide space for seedlings. It also thins out the tree canopy, canopy which allows more sunlight to reach the forest floor. So saplings and other plants can grow. Some populations depend on forest fires. For example, populations of sequoias, a type of redwood tree, depend on a forest fire to reproduce. They need low intensity fires, which means they don't burn really hot to release seeds from their cones. So their cones kind of explode in a fire and are released. That's, that's really neat. It's like that the falcon on Harry Potter that is reborn after it burns. And did y'all hear Potter fans? I don't know. 
Forest fires also reduce competition from other species. Okay, so I want you to read the section on engineer it and answer number 18. You're gonna do take it further on your own. Okay, I've, um, and then you're gonna do lesson check. I, I don't know, look at your lesson stuff. It's on Google Classroom and y'all can figure it out. You're pretty smart. See you guys. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Bye guys.